I've always had a real fascination in trailers how scenes will be omitted from the, the theatrical release. Mm -hmm. Now in Home Alone, there's a scene where Macaulay Culkin uh, is talking with, is, is being cross-examined by uh, the grocery clerk, a female grocery clerk. In the trailer, uh, he's being cross-examined by a male clerk. Right. Now, what's the story behind that? Well, it's the same thing. People were asking me about Mrs. Doubtfire, saying, well, the, do you do a lot of improvisations? And I've always worked that way. I always change scenes. I always bring other people into scenes. In, in, in Home Alone, uh, I got an idea that this guy the store manager, who was always sort of lurking over this girl's shoulder, would come forward in one of the scenes and, and start to interrogate him. So in the trailer, they actually used one of my outtakes and put it in the trailer. That sometimes happens. It's interesting. In trailers, sometimes you'll see scenes that aren't in picture, in, in, don't end up in the final picture. Now, in the original Home Alone, what kind of scenes do you remember were dropped from the final release? Of Home Alone? Yes. Very few scenes. It's interesting because Home Alone wasn't an extremely long picture. There were a couple of scenes. There was one scene where Macaulay asked, asked a woman in a grocery store about what sort of uh, fruit he should be buying. And uh, there were a couple of scenes in the French apartment with the other members of the family. There was one scene with the, the younger sister talking about Christmas and being together for Christmas. And uh, the very, very little stuff was dropped from Home Alone. When did you get your first inkling of how successful that film was going to be? Home Alone? Uh, I guess when it opened, the Friday that it opened, we were just shocked that it uh, did so well. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, th I thought we, we realized that people were going to continue to see this picture. Now, with Mrs. Doubtfire, you always hear stories about Robin Williams just kind of being an out-of-control type of actor. Were you a little concerned going in that uh, you might not be able to restra restrain him? No, I thought that was part of his charm. I thought uh, if you've got somebody like Robin Williams, utilize his talents. And, uh, and so Robin and I always did two or three scripted takes and then a few improvisational takes, and then we managed to cut the whole thing together. Okay. Now, the movie doesn't have a, a totally happy ending. Mm -hmm. Was there ever any pressure to maybe make Pierce Brosnan more of a villain and to, get, to have Sally Field and Robin Williams get back together at the end? Uh, I, those were in some of the earlier drafts of the, the film, but I thought that they were unrealistic and not really interesting. For me, it was important that, uh, that n there, there be no evil characters in this picture, that everyone be very real, that there's no black and white villains, and uh, every, everyone in this picture should be very, very real. And that's why, um, at the end of the picture, when they don't get back together, you're not left with a sense of like, oh, I've just been cheated as an audience. You're left with a real, honest, emotional feeling. People were sobbing at the end of the picture, crying at the end of the picture when I saw it the other night. But it's really because that the, the emotions are real. And it's for, for once, I mean, for, for once in film, you, you, you're left with an ending that doesn't lie to you. We find ourselves uh, test markets a lot for movies, mm -hmm. uh, audience reaction cards, that type of thing. How much stock do you put in those? And how often have you made, like, say, specific changes to specific movies? Um, it's not changes. Uh, I think test marketing is uh, extremely important in a comedy. I've been doing it since the Marx Brothers. You take the picture out in the road and you see where the laughs are. And I don't think film comedy has changed to a point where we can say, oh, we shouldn't do that. Comedy is the most important thing to take in front of an audience. A straight dramatic picture. I even think you should take a straight dramatic picture in front of an audience because you may think there's a brilliant line in the picture that's incredibly moving, but it could send an audience into howls of laughter. I don't think any filmmaker is comfortable enough not doing that. You have to be prepared. So uh, for me, uh, taking, taking Mrs. Dot, a picture like Mrs. Doubtfire out on the road is extremely important because it, it also lets you pace the comedy and pace, pace the laughter. There may be a great laugh right on top of another line and you may need to pace that out a little bit. In Mrs. Doubtfire's case there were so many laughs that we couldn't pace them all out. We would have slowed the movie down too much but it was important to do. And one final question, I know you're always asked about uh, Home Alone 3. Mm -hmm. Now what, uh, what are your feelings about doing a third film and what is the status of that right now? Uh, if there's a Home Alone 3 I won't be involved. I, uh, I feel that I've done my best possible work that I can on, a, on, a, on those two Home Alone pictures and I've I really given a lot. Uh, on those pictures passionately as a director. There's no reason to do it if you don't feel passionate about it. Home Alone 3 I just can't can't really feel passionate about and uh, I'm, su I'm sure the studio is going to want to make it. I mean I can't imagine they wouldn't want to but I've done my sequel and I think it's probably my only sequel in my, you know, knock on wood in my career.
I may do, yeah. Well, maybe a Wayne's World picture here or there, but that's it. You know. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>